A ver, déjame, déjame este, presentarte, Raquel. Buenas noches, buenas noches. Bienvenidos a nuestro programa Tiempo Latino. Un programa para la comunidad latina del oeste de Michigan y, por supuesto, para el público en general. Y esta noche tenemos aquí este, por Facebook a nuestra invitada Raquel Salas. Ella es abogada de, de un bufete aquí en Grand Rapids. ¿Cómo estás, Raquel? Sí, hola, muy buenas tardes a toda nuestra comunidad latina uh, de aquí del oeste de Michigan. Estoy aquí con Pablo uh, uh, para hablar uh, un poquito sobre eh, uno de los asuntos que estoy mirando que está pasando mucho de casos criminales a las personas que uh, tienen la DACA. Yes. Which way? Uh oh, se cortó. Okay. Estamos teniendo problemas técnicos, pero... Estoy aquí, ¿no me escucha? Sí, se, cor se está cortando. El impeachment. Y también en la otra pantalla tenemos a la... Sí, me dio Raquel. Aquí estoy, aquí sigo okay. con ustedes. ¿Me escuchan? Bueno, sí, sí te escucho. Buenas noches, buenas noches. Bienvenidos a Tiempo Latino. Teníamos a Raquel Salas aquí en el teléfono, pero lamentablemente este, no tuvimos éxito con la conexión. Impeach Trump, part five. Uh, tonight we're dedicating the, this show to the impeachment of Trump. Estamos dedicando este programa a la destitución de Trump. Esta noche tenemos en vivo a el proceso de destitución de, de Trump. Están introdu, introdu, introduciendo los uh, artículos de, para destituir a Trump de la presidencia en la, en la Cámara de los Representantes allá en Washington, D.C. So tonight, uh, the representatives are in, uh, introducing articles of impeachment. Uh, we are the, this is live, live from uh, Washington, D.C., from, from the Capitol, right, Mark? That's right. And this is Mark Sapetowski, our, our guest. My name is Pablo Bello. Welcome, welcome to, uh, to Tiempo Latino, uh, CTV. Yes, CTV, the CTV Society, also known as the Society for Economic Equality. Testimony. And tonight, we're here live to comment on the actual impeachment of Trump. So he's actually being impeached as we speak here tonight. And man, does he deserve it. And uh, as I was discussing tonight, I mean, just uh, an hour ago with someone, Trump is quite possibly the first president of the United States who will be impeached two or three times even because he's going to do the same thing again and again. I mean, this is what Trump is. This is what Trump does. You know, he told the, uh, the dictator of North Korea, oh, cross lines, no American president has ever been in North Korea. Well, I'll just do my little tippy toe over this line. Haha, <laughs> see, I like to cross lines. I'm a rebel, he said. And so we got Trump. Speaker, you know, he won't be impeached once. Only he'll be impeached no two or three times. Is above the what law. say you, Pablo? Not even the president I think that's true. Of the United States. I want to wish you an impeachment. I want to wish you a real impeachment from the bottle of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very happy, Mark. Uh, finally, uh, 
there is the possibility of uh, impeaching Trump, removing Trump from the presidency. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'm so glad. Oh, look at this. This is Representative Andy Levin. Oh, could we see our Michigan guy on the camera? From Michigan, from and Michigan. I, I will turn up the volume. We do nothing more and nothing Let's go less to the camera. than fulfill our duty to our country and to the our Camera to our Michigan guy. Mr. Trump has allowed foreign powers to interfere in our domestic affairs. Oh, come on. Let's get him on He's camera. He's endangered our national security and our democracy itself. No, no, For no. That reasons, one, yes. We must impeach this president. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield back. Oh, I'm from Georgia. Oh, now we're going to get... Is it? Madam... Uh, Speaker, at this point, I have a, unanimous, a yield for a unanimous Good. request of the gentleman. Good. 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 I pose this uh, resolution on impeachment and ask that my words be put in the record. Without objections, the order. No, Madam here's Speaker, a Repub I typical the Republican. Republican. South Carolina. Gentleman's recognized. Uh, Speaker, I ask, uh, pose this, these resolutions. Turn it down, turn it down. I don't want to hear that. Without objections, the order. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent for the gentleman from Mississippi. Good. 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 All right. Mass Back Zappa. to you, Pablo. What do you have to say? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, uh, we're very excited. Uh, Trump is going to be impeached. Uh, hopefully, I hope that they get enough votes in the Senate to remove him. Well, I don't think that is at all likely, but we could be surprised. I mean, he's not a likable person. He's certainly a criminal. He has the Republicans terrified, and they're they're acting like little children underneath the giant uh, Trump, you know. But um, no, uh, I think it's a good thing because at least he needs to be impeached. If he wasn't, then we're definitely in a dictatorship. This way, at least there's been a penalty imposed upon him politically, and future presidents, and even Trump will bring that into consideration. So I'm very happy that the Democrats had the bravery to actually impeach him. I hope that, as Trump says, he will not execute, you know, arrest and execute people, which he's talked about. You know, I hope that the fantasies of the Republicans are not fulfilled in terms of retribution. You know, as ridiculous as that sounds, they've talked about it quite a bit. Including the president has talked about that. Meeting to extort a Ukrainian president. That's abuse of power. Do you want this guy turned up? I hear, I hear that right. the, um, Trump is going crazy, Mark. I think he already was crazy when he came in, and now he's just crazier. Yes. And yeah. He looks horrible. He looks like he's dying. It looks like he's. He's already in the tomb and he's kind of rotting, you know he, what I mean? He wrote he, a letter to bad. Nancy Pelosi full of uh, insults and uh, nonsense. Right. right, and lies. Yeah. And lies, and uh, yeah, yeah. it means that he's going crazy, Mark. Well, he has calcification around the arteries of the heart. That's why he went to the hospital, probably. Uh, that was part of his he perfect health report from his doctor, was that, oh, yeah, he does have this, this heart disease. But other than that, he has perfect health, you know, <laughs> other than the, his dementia and all the rest of it. So good, good news for our, for, our, um, for our community if he's removed, Mark. For the Latino community, for the immigrant community. Madam Speaker, uh, well, it could get worse before it gets better the longer he lives and remains the president. Uh, you know, I, I think he will not be removed through this process, but he is Trump and he will do something else. Trump will always, it looks like, do the next thing because. Trump always has to push the envelope, and he believes that he's some kind of special creature of God or something. He's so egomaniacal and so crazy and perhaps so senile that he will do something worse next time, and there'll be another impeachment in the second term. But he's paid a price already, and hopefully he's paid the price of his not being electable in the second term, and that's, that's, that's what we have to pray for. We really. hope so, we hope so. Along with Nancy Pelosi, I pray for the president. 
I pray for him that he goes on vacation and doesn't get reelected. You know, uh, you know, he could go on vacation to hunt tigers in Siberia with Putin. Together, they could destroy an endangered species. Yeah, he could do that. You know, together. But but uh, I, I mean, they, he has committed uh, high crimes and misdemeanors, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, he called. He called the, the he, president of Ukraine. He's, he's been traitorous. We have an ally who's fighting uh, a country that's one of our traditional enemies that's now become an enemy again, headed by a dictator who's destroyed their democracy. And uh, our president is buddies with him. And besides that, they're, they've undermined the country that is, he's invading that wants to join NATO. And we actually have soldiers over there training their soldiers. Uh, we're giving them weapons to fight him, and yet Trump wants to end the sanctions against Russia. Trump is a pro-Russian. Trump acts like a Russian agent. Tr I really do believe, I mean, it's obvious that Trump is a Russian asset. You know, uh, he's well, irrationally, today, like, in love with today, Putin. You today know, there, was a, there was a report that the TV... In Russia, I mean, the broadcasters are, say, are, are bragging that Trump is on the underside. I think that's, so. He's uh, on the other side. You could call it the underside. Yeah. That's very, very alarming, you know. Yeah, yeah, very, very. Uh, uh, it's amazing that this, this pro-American, you know, military uh, policeman of the world party, the Republican Party, has decided that Trump is their friend. He's destroying everything that, you know, the, he's destroying our alliances. He's endangering the military might of the United States. The military might of the United States isn't just a bunch of ships and airplanes and, and guys with guns. It's alliances. It's a, it's a strategic arrangement that the U.S. has built up ever since World War II. And right now, the U.S. is in more danger than since the Battle of the Bulge 75 years ago. It's no accident that people are mentioning the Battle of the Bulge because we have not been in danger like this since we were, you know, at, at uh, strangle grips with the Nazis. It's that bad. This is this is the greatest danger that our republic has been in since then, Pablo. Yeah, and uh, so I don't I don't understand how the Republicans are uh, defending him. I don't either. I really don't. Because I, if if the in Russia the broadcasters are say are bragging that Trump is on their side. Yeah. I mean, look at this. Is this is a Republican? Look, look, real, real, like, uh, 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 sham. But, uh, look, but look, I mean, like, look, uh, sham. Which, which hunt? Look, 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 real. I mean, like, I mean, like, how can you defend the uh, representative the Collins of Georgia? The president, <laughs> if, if, uh, if in Russia they're bragging that. Trump is on the side. It's and obvious. It's obvious. But it's not obvious to his supporters. You know, I've got to say this, Pablo. And this is the most, probably the most original and most important thing I have to say tonight is that uh, Trump has legitimacy in that he's, he looks like a hope for the factory workers who lost their jobs first to uh, the export of their jobs to China. Now it's also, and maybe even more so, automation, but there are legitimate complaints in this country about what has happened to the middle working classes and, and beyond that even, to the whole country, there's a declining standard of living. So it's a legitimate complaint, but Trump snuck in there and the Democrats have to speak to that. The Democrats have to speak to uh, the globalized economy and to automation in a way that uh, Trump has usurped them from, from doing. Does that make sense to you at all? I well, um, I mean, he was the hero, but I mean, but all this is happening. I don't know. I, I don't know. Who was the hero? He was the hero of these uh, these people. people. These people, but... Because uh, they saw him as being someone who recognized that they lost their jobs. Why did they lose their jobs? Well, their jobs were... Uh, Export to China. 
They were exported to China. It's cracked. Uh, and I mean, uh, and they're they're automated as well. I mean, the U.S. is automating, but the jobs that weren't automated went to China, and now China's automating also. I mean, China is co becoming a near rival of the United States over, over all of this, and the U.S. is. But Apple, Apple, just they frittering around. Fabricates the uh, the iPhone. The factories are in China. Absolutely, absolutely. They were in the United States, and then. Went right over to China. I mean, like. Uh, I mean, it's it's not the immigrants they're responsible for this. No crime. I mean, I mean, how can they say stuff like that? Because up is down. Yes, this guy's saying there's no crime. Well, they say there's no crime, there's no evidence. You know, we saw something like 12 people come out and give us the evidence firsthand. They were right in the uh, administration, in the executive branch. They were right around the president and the people around the president. They testified. Guess what? They brought this whole thing up. So this is absurd, this whole thing. That, oh, there's no there there. There's no crime there. Obviously, there's a crime. Obviously, there's something there. Uh, so this is all um, what people these days call gaslighting. And I never understood this term gaslighting until about two weeks ago someone said, I mean, I, I knew what it meant, but I didn't know where it came from. It came from some movie where some woman saw some crime or some, something happened and all the people around her said, oh, that never happened, you're just imagining it. Well, that's what the Republicans are doing. They're saying, oh, this didn't happen. You heard people testify, but there's no evidence there. They testified to the evidence, but oh, it never happened. You know, <laughs> there's no there there. It's just a Republican witch hunt. It's fake news. <laughs> there's no there there. What are you talking about? This is the worst crime in the history of the United States. The Democratic witch hunt against the president. The president is a Russian asset. He's like a Russian agent. Get it through your thick head. This guy's like a spy. He's a traitor. This man is a traitor to the United States. This man is destroying our alliances. This man told uh, South Korea to increase his defense budget by five times what they are used to spending, or he's out of there. <laughs> Pablo, well, you gotta just, jump in here. I'm just. Uh, oh, I want to talk about somebody else, Mark. Uh, oh yeah. In, oh, yeah. in Mexico, in Mexico, oh, yeah, they yeah, uh, yeah. they just arrested in Texas, in Dallas, Texas. I think it was in Dallas, but it was in Texas for sure. Uh, Genaro Garcia Luna, he's. Uh, Someone like the secretary of like security, like uh, was he the some, attorney general? Some someone like uh, the attorney general. Attorney general. Okay, in, so he's in, like uh, in the justice department, head of the justice department, or he was. He was, and, and he uh, got arrested. He in was Texas arrested in Texas for uh, for having uh, a, a relationship with the narco traffickers. Uh, Chapo, Chapo, you know. Este so this is under the former president Guzman. that he was in that administration. The Calderon, Calderon, that was the president then, uh, uh, more than six years ago. So I mean, the last president was Peña Nieto, and okay, the one after, uh, after him was uh, uh, Calderon. Mm -hmm. He was the president, and he was uh, Genaro Garcia Luna was the the uh, el jefe de seguridad del, del el secretario de seguridad de, de presidente. Someone like uh, the attorney general, and he uh, he was arrested. This is a big scandal in uh, in Mexico right now. Uh, the what do people think it means that um, it means the party is totally corrupt? The the president Calderon was uh, colluded with with uh, narco traffickers. Acusar. 
Correcto. Acusar. Acusar. Oh, bueno. <laughs> Accusing? Accusing. Uh, yo sé acusar uh, Presidente Trump. <laughs> Oh, so this guy was arrested, Mark. It, it's a super scandal in, in Mexico right now because Calderon, he's trying to like, uh, he's, he wants another uh, party on, in, to form another party in Mexico. He's criticizing Obrador, the, mm -hmm. the actual president of Mexico. And now this big scandal, his, his attorney general is... Uh, was arrested by the U.S. authorities, not even the Mexican authorities, the U.S. authorities here in the United States. And um, this is uh, a, a big, big, big uh, stroke to, uh, to Calderon, this uh, former president. And, and he was, uh, I'm pretty sure he has to do something with uh, with, when uh, the police arrested uh, Chapo, Luis, uh, Luis Guzman lo era, uh, alias El Chapo, the, the narco trafficker. I'm pretty sure he talked to the authorities and, uh, and that's why they arrested this uh, Genaro Garcia Luna. And this is, this is what was uh, the big news in Mexico City right now. In Mexico, no? Uh, what else? What else? We have uh, driver license, driver's licenses in uh, in New Jersey for undocumented people. But not in Michigan so far. Not in Michigan, unfortunately. We used to. We used to have it. They used for to a while, it. for a short while, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Cosecha is fighting for that. So uh, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, uh, the government give uh, the driver license back to undocumented people. But uh, we can go back now to the impeachment, Mark. Uh, we are very happy, very happy that Trump is, is being impeached. Uh, yeah, you know, Trump, he's not, it, it really does not look like it's, I mean, it's possible, but it's unlikely that he will be convicted. I mean, he's unlikable enough and criminal enough that a bunch of senators could be keeping it secret how they're going to vote, but uh, I don't anticipate that. But uh, they're, they're but I am happy at what is happening to the extent that it's happening. I am happy for that. They are trying to uh, pass uh, like a new law in the Senate, like to make the the vote secret, right? The vote secret. Oh. Oh, really? Well, if the vote's secret, I think Trump is doomed. <laughs> so because if I mean, it's secret, uh, I, I really think he's doomed. If they can keep that secret and honest, uh, I think Mor he's doomed. The Mormon, what, who, who's the Mormon? Uh, the Mormon is uh, the former uh, governor, uh, governor yeah. of Massachusetts, who is Mitt Romney. He Mitt was, Romney. He's from Michigan. He's the son of one of our uh, better governors of the 20th century. Yeah, Mitt uh, uh, who was uh, Governor Romney? George Romney. Right. He's pushing. He's pushing to, uh, to have it pass, secret to pass a uh, to pass a law. I think that's great. To make let's the, pass that law. Yeah. The vote. If they pass secret, that law, I think Trump is in big trouble. If it's a secret vote. And if it's secret. Uh, a secret ballot? Yeah, I think he's he's going to be out of there if that's the case because these a lot of these guys just hate Trump. I mean, who wouldn't hate Trump? Only the people who don't know him and but don't I, have to work with him, you know, and I who are, I who think are, they are afraid of him, duped by the media. Yes, they're afraid of him. They're they're terrified of him. You see photographs of uh, uh, Lindsey Graham, and he's like, oh, <laughs> and Trump is like, rrr, rrr, rrr. you know, you can tell Trump is telling him that he's a little boy or something, you know, who whose uh, sexuality is not very powerful or something. And Lindsey Graham is like, oh, you know, you can just tell that that's, the, that's what Trump is. He's a bully. Trump is a big, fat bully. And he's a liar. He lies every day of his life. And he gets away with it. That's the magic of Trump. He's the criminal who stayed out of jail all his life, just like his dad. They're criminals. Don't you get it out there? Don't you get it, you Republicans? This guy is a criminal. 
And he's a traitor. He's a traitor. He's betraying the United States. He's destroying our country. And he's possibly setting up a civil war. Don't you get it? Ah, Mark, but, uh, but I'm, uh, there, were, there were demonstrations yesterday. Here, oh, I here, hope so. Uh, I hope here so. Here in Grand Rapids. I hope so. Uh, there are demonstrations in Battle Creek where uh, they're expecting uh, Trump tomorrow. Uh, Trump is coming to, to town. You know, someone told me Trump was in the Kremlin uh, watching TV with Putin you know, watching the <laughs> impeachment and, you know, like eating junk food. And I, I really, I told someone that's where Trump and he, Trump is, he's, he's at Putin's house watching the impeachment, of course. But it turns out it was like a joke that one of these guys on, one of the Democrats on TV uh, on, uh, in the impeachment thing was just telling a joke. But it was totally believable to me. Of course, Putin and Trump are watching the impeachment over it. Putin's house in the Kremlin, of course. <laughs> so, big demonstrations yesterday, Mark, here in Grand Rapids, uh, uh, anti, Battle, Battle anti, Creek, Detroit. Anti-Trupe uh, demonstraciones. All over, all over the country, big demonstrations oh, against yes. uh, uh, promoting the impeachment of Trump. Uh, dump Trump. Yeah. Dump Chumpy. Dump Trump, dump Trump, yeah. Dump Chump. Down with Trump, dump Trump, yes. So, um... Down with the traitor. Trumpus. No more Trumpus among us. Ah, Trump. So, um, tonight, tonight you think he's going to be impeached in the House of Representatives? He's, be, he's going to be impeached, yeah. It's, it's, it's getting stretched out here, but yeah, he'll be impeached, and that's a good thing. The hearing um, start at uh, 9, 9 a.m., I think, no? Yes, it the did, hearing. it did, or the somewhere around start, uh, 9.30 or so. I think it's excellent that he's being impeached. It's too bad he's still going to be president, at least for a while. Even if he li wins the election, there's still the next impeachment, because believe me, this is what Trump is. Trump does not believe in rules. He never did. He's always lied all his life. He believes that if he believes something strongly enough, it's like, it's like a fairy book. It becomes true. Ah, this is really what he believes because uh, he went to a Presbyterian church where the, um, uh, what was it, Norman Vincent Peale, I think, was his, actually his minister of his family. And he told Trump and he told his congregation you know, the power of belief. You believe it strong enough, it becomes reality. You, in a sense, are God. Because what is God other than consciousness itself? If your consciousness and your belief is strong enough, you change reality. And that's what, that's what Trump believes. Uh, and this guy told Trump that he was going, that he, Trump, that he had a vision from God, meaning the minister, Norman Vincent Peale or whatever, that Trump would be the greatest builder in American history. And I think, <laughs> I think it's true that Trump is building the greatest tower of BS that the US has ever seen. And so the prophecy is fulfilled. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, uh, but uh, we should explain to our audience uh, what happened with impeachment, right? I mean, how did it, it start? It hasn't happened, oh. I mean, uh, Trump called the president of Ukraine to pressure him to investigate well, that's the, the son of Biden, right? Okay. Uh, Hunter Biden. Well, okay, so the Russians under Putin, they invaded Ukraine. They called it a rebellion of the Ukrainians, but really it was Russians who changed their uniforms and, you know, so it's a Russian invasion and the Russians are uh, trying to reintegrate Ukraine into Russia. Russia. And they're also trying to reassert uh, Russian power in the face of, you know, they've had a bad time with the decline of their power and the power of the U.S. So they're pushing back against the way the Russians look at it, against the U.S. and against NATO and against the Europeans. And so um, Trump 
likes Putin and he likes dictators and he likes Russia and he likes uh, Eastern European women. And so he marries them more often than other women. So he, they what, have. What is the obsession of Trump with uh, Eastern Europe? Man? Like, it's it's non democratic, it's Russian, uh, it's mafia. So he loves mafia type people. He, Trump imagines himself as an American mafioso kind of guy. The Godfather. He's not Italian. Yes, he likes the Godfather myth, uh, and so does Giuliani. And so that's one of the things they have in common. That's another thing that was held in common with Cohen, the lawyer, is that these are all guys who admire the Godfather kind of image. You know, <laughs> it's the Godfather. It's the criminal. It's the cool criminal. Trump. That's why Trump says, "Oh." Uh, it should be illegal for people to uh, go tell what's happening to the police or to the FBI. It should be illegal. He's not joking. <laughs> this is Trump in his stupid way. I mean, Trump looks at criminals as heroes. His dad was a criminal. Trump's dad was a criminal. Trump is a criminal. The whole family and, are and criminals. He was uh, part of the Ku Klux Klan, no? Yes, his dad was a part of the Ku Klux Klan also. His dad was a criminal in that he ripped people off. Like Trump he does. was a pimp. And I, I don't know about that. But it wouldn't, I mean, once you're a criminal, you know, you're a small time criminal, you, you can become a bigger time criminal and you can branch out and do other criminal things. Trump is a criminal. He's always been a criminal. He's always ripped people off. He never paid people what he owed them. He's always somehow stayed out of jail. So this becomes the he, myth. He was, he was the star of a reality show. I mean, he, the apprentice, right? <sighs> Okay, so Trump uh, lost all his money because he ripped everyone off. And it was, he always borrowed money and then he was losing money and he borrowed more money and he ripped people off and he threatened people that he owed money to. And then eventually it all came down in a big way. And the whole Trump empire collapsed magnificently, spectacularly in the late 80s and the early 90s. And Trump was broke. Trump owed so much money. And yet they lent money to him still a little bit because he owed money and so they wanted to keep him going. But the Russians came in and the Russians started pumping money at him. He became, it seems that what happened was he was saved by the Russian mafia and the Russian government and he became a money launderer for them. And that's why Trump doesn't want his financial information to be made public, his taxes, his banking information through Deutsche Bank, that has to remain secret because Trump is a criminal. Trump is a money launderer for the Russian mafia and for the Russian government, and that's why Trump has to keep all these things secret. So that's why Trump is always doing everything the Russians want, because he loves the Russians, he loves dictators, he loves Putin, he loves the people who are criminals and get away with it because they're smart. Duh, they're smart, you know. I, but Mark, I don't understand like the obsession of the people with uh, with Trump. I mean, like uh, the people they are following him. I mean, <sighs> like, uh, well, is this just ignorance? Is it's racism? Not. Okay. W what's going on, Mark? Okay, what's going on? going on is that yes, Trump has has keyed into racism. You know, his dad was in the Klan. Trump knows racism. People who know Trump say, yeah, he's a racist. He'll use the N-word. He'll say, oh, why is it that all the um, poo-poo whole countries in the world are in places with, uh, you know, dark-skinned people? You know, it's because they're poo-poo people, he'll say. Obviously, duh, he'll say. You know, so yeah, Trump's a racist. I mean, he's a total racist. Uh, yeah, that's Trump. Uh, by, by, but what, I mean, like, uh, what was your, qu your question? But, uh, I, I diverged. But I, uh, I, I mean, like, um, he's he's obsessed with the with Eastern Europe. He's obsessed with uh, because it's the mafia. It's the international mafia, and they they saved his financial empire. They allowed him to continue to say, "Oh, uh, I'm a rich guy. I'm a." But at the same time, they, he admires like uh, Norway. Because he wants uh, people from Norway. Here. Well, that's him signaling his racism. I mean, the people in Norway are uh, are, are pretty I mean, are pretty damn white. You I know, mean, they're I very mean, white people. I mean, he says why why uh, the people from Norway doesn't immigrate to the United States? 
Because they're, 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 because they live they're, 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 li they're living in a rich country with a, a pretty nice environment. And uh, I mean, they have why would a, they come here? They yeah. have a free health care. Yes, exactly. They live in a socialist country. They live in a nice socialist country, a respectable, nice socialist country the where minimum, where you can be a capitalist, but you can't be as fantastically rich as a capitalist. The, minim, as you can the minimum the wage is like. Uh, I think fifteen dollars per hour or more. Oh gosh, probably more. Yeah. And and uh, they have uh, vacations. Yeah, uh, probably two month vacation. The uh, schools are good. Uh, yeah. The the standard of living is very high. And and total free health care. I mean, yeah. and and Trump says, I, why they don't come to live to uh, to United States? I mean. Why would they? I mean, like I mean. Only for an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> in the sense of facing a difficult situation where they want to come to the United States. I mean, States. I, imagine like an, uh, Maybe a, vacation, a Norwegian yeah. here, I mean, he's going to come here and, and find a job, and, and then what? I mean, when he finds out that there is no health care, there is no vacations, and there's, the minimum yeah. wage is less than $9. And the schools are really crappy. You know, yeah, uh, the, uh, for public schools, you know, they go, what? You know, I have to send my kid to a, what? You know, a crap uh, school or to a private school and spend a lot of money? Ugh. People with guns. No, why would they come here? Like, why would uh, they come here? Yeah. People I mean, with guns? I, I, don't, I don't understand, like, I, I don't understand why, uh, I mean, Trump is so ignorant, I think. He's very ignorant. Okay. Yes. He doesn't understand what he says. Well. Like, I think I think at some level Trump knows when he's lying and when he's telling the truth, but it doesn't matter that much to him, and the difference is not that stark between the truth and his lies. Uh, I think that's the key to why he's so ignorant is because he never needed to learn things because he was never interested in the truth. So if you're not interested in the truth, why do you need to learn anything? So <laughs> so that's why he uh, thanked President Mozzarella of Italy for the fantastic alliance that uh, uh, that the U.S. and Italy have had ever since the Roman Empire, you know, because he is so ignorant. But he's, he's not dumb. I really object to people who say, or I disagree with people who say, that he's, he's ignorant, dumb. Right? He's, he's ignorant. ignorant, but he's, he's crafty. He's smart. He's smart the way a so vicious a criminal, he's very smart the way a vicious criminal can be smart. But he's not educated, and he's not intellectually curious. He wants to manipulate people and bully people and steal from people, but he's not an intellectually um, trained mind. He's not at all. But he's a dangerous person, and he's an evil person. That's what Trump is. And he's a pathetic person, too. Let's, Mark, let's face Mark it. I would like to make a parenthesis for the people that are okay. watching in, the, in, 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 in Spanish. Spanish. Okay. Uh, estamos hablando de la destitución de Trump uh, que se está llevando a cabo ahorita en, el, en la Casa de los Representantes. Eh, ahorita está el representante Steny en Hoyer uh -huh. en, eh, en el canal aquí en C-SPAN, lo tenemos en vivo. Están debatiendo uh, para, sobre el tema del, uh, de la destitución de Trump. Uh, Mark eh, nos acaba de decir que... Este, Trump es muy es, es muy ignorante pero pero es inteligente. He's very ignorant, but he's he's smart. You say smart. As a right. criminal can be smart. Como la una mente criminal brillante, ¿no? Yes. Criminal. Yes, I would brilliant. say so. Yes. Brilliant, like uh, as a criminal, right? Yes. So es un pequeño resumen de lo de lo que está pasando. Uh, I would like to also mention about what's going on in Mexico right now, Mark. Uh, Genaro García Luna, uh, el secretario de Seguridad de... Bueno, el secretario de la, Se de la Secretaría de Seguridad durante el sexenio de Calderón fue arrestado hace unos días y se encuentra bajo custodia aquí en los Estados Unidos, fue arrestado en el estado de Texas. Y esto es un gran escándalo porque Calderón estaba atacando duramente a López Obrador, este, lo estaba criticando. 
y ahora resulta que su secretario de Estado está arrestado, acusado de narcotráfico, de tener nexos con el narcotráfico, con el Chapo Guzmán, con el cartel de Sinaloa en México, y fue arrestado por la policía de los Estados Unidos. Lo están investigando. El, en cuatro semanas este, él va a ver a, a un juez federal en la, ahí en la en, en, en uno de los distritos de, de Texas. I am, st I am telling uh, to the, the people that speak Spanish, uh, Mark, uh, Genaro García Luna, the ex former secretary of security in, in Mexico uh, under Calderón, um, he, uh, he's going to see the judge in four weeks. So big, big, big news. But uh, let, let's go back to the impeachment, Mark. Okay. Uh, so once, once uh, it's approved, uh, the impeachment is approved in the House of Rep Representatives, goes to the Senate. The Senate has to debate or perform some kind of investigation, and then they have to vote, right? They don't have to. I mean, once it goes from the House of Representatives, it's up to the Senate how to deal with it. Uh, the Constitution assumes that they have a trial. The trial could be that someone says, okay, and someone says something, and then someone else says something, and then um, McConnell will say, whoop, that's it, it's over. It could be that short. Or it could go on for a few days, or there could be witnesses. Trump wants all sorts of witnesses. Trump wants it to become a big deal where he gets totally exonerated. But but Mul oh, Mulvaney, he doesn't want Mulvaney to testify. He's chief of staff of the White House. No, he wants he wants to bring out the Bidens and have them embarrassed. He wants but it becomes a danger that uh, Mulvaney will be called in or uh, uh, the uh, uh, Bolton will be called in and that that would go that could go badly because they'll be under Bolton oath they'll have to tell the truth secretary of Bolton was the national security advisor Bolton, national security, uh, Bolton national. is the one who said this is a drug deal I don't want anything to do with it uh, and Giuliani is a hand grenade and he's going to blow us all up you know, so you know that Bolton didn't like what was going on, and he told... He, he knew that he can go to jail yes, for getting involved yes, in, yes, this, yes. in this uh, affair, The only right? one who can't go to jail as long as he's president is Trump, apparently. Merry Christmas, Tom. <laughs> May, Merry, I want to wish you an impeachment. Could we... I want to wish you Could we say Merry Christmas, Donald Dump? You know, I... From the battle... Oh my heart. So, uh, no, he's, it's extremely unlikely that he will be removed by the Senate. Um, but it could be that he'll be further damaged. We don't know what will happen. And I hope that people all over the country are talking about this right now and some minds are being changed because it's, it's extraordinary to me that so few minds were changed. After the initial impact of the Ukraine thing, he went from 30% in favor of impeachment to about 50%, and it sat there now for like two months. So this, this is historical, Mark. Oh yeah, of course it's this historical. This is the fourth president in the history of the United States to be impeached, right? Yes. No, actually, he's the third because Nixon. Jackson was impeached, right? No, he should have been, but no. Uh, it was Johnson, way back just after the Civil War, was impeached, oh, and he was acquitted in the House of Representatives. Uh, Nixon, after the um, Judiciary Committee voted to pass articles of impeachment and put it over to the House, he resigned, he resigned before they could have the House vote, uh, which is what's happening Tricky here. Dicky. Tricky dicky. And Clinton, yeah, uh, Clinton was impeached, but he was acquitted. You know, and, and the numbers in favor of removing him from office were never, they were only, only got to about 30%. And, and numbers here are 50% in, or more in favor of removing this guy from office. So he's facing an uphill battle. The danger is that this guy declares fake news 
and his followers are fanatical, there's a danger that he won't leave office even if he loses the election. If he wins the election, uh, if he feels exonerated, and he knows that he's going to be arrested as soon as he's not president, he's going to be tempted to become a dictator uh, or some kind of bizarre king. You know, it's strange, the BBC had a, uh, a series that went on for a year or two where there was a king of the United States who, strangely enough, was some, you know, kind of lower class uh, but crafty British guy who somehow became the, <laughs> the king of the United States. And, you know, Trump, yeah, he loved that kind of thing, be president or dictator, uh, because how high can he go? It's the greatest reality show in his life, you know, to be president and to be dictator of the United States. It's all about him. It's all about Trump. He did, he doesn't care about you out there. He doesn't care about you, the American people. He only cares that you think that he cares about you. And you believe it, you more, dumb more, people. Yeah. I, I would like to mention that Morbani, the, the, the chief of staff of, of the White House, he, he told live during an interview, during a, a press conference, he say uh, Tom, uh, Trump committed uh, an, um, in, in impeachment of, of offense. offense. Uh, he say he called the quote. Uh, how do you call it? Quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. Quid that pro means quo. one thing for another, essentially. So, Mulvaney recognized this. Uh, yes. Yes. On, he, on well, TV. Someone said, what essentially you're a, a reporter. And he said, and he said You're oh, saying a quid pro quo. And quid essentially, quo. and he said, well, it happens all the time. There's going to be politics uh, in foreign policy. Come on, grow up, get used to it. You know, but get used to this is so blatant and, and far beyond what, what anyone has That's has why seen. Trump doesn't want him to testify. Yes, yes. Because he knows that if he goes to the, to the House of Representatives or the Senate and testifies, and he, if he lies, he goes to jail. Yes, everyone except Trump. Trump can always, while he's still president, fly to Moscow and then you know, go get his uh, apartment in the Kremlin while he waits for Trump Tower Moscow. And Putin will give him the heroic medal of the fatherland and kiss him on both butt cheeks. And uh, then he'll be set for life. But all these other people are vulnerable to getting arrested. You know? And Trump is too if he stays in the US. Uh, that's why he has to stay president or be dictator or while he's still president, escape to Russia, to mother Russia where he belongs. You know, because he's a traitor. But what I, I don't understand, Mark, is... Will we let impeachment I mean, like, well, I understand, but uh, I mean, like, Mulvaney, like, I mean, what, why they don't bring this guy to testify? Because the, okay. Now, this is, goes back to the earlier investigation of the whole corruption of Trump uh, really accepting, apparently, because there were something like 58 uh, meetings between Trumpy campaign people and the Russians during the campaign. And he said things like, Russia, if you're listening, and he said, oh, I love Russia, and you know, why shouldn't we get along with Russia and end the sanctions? And he did all that. Okay, what was your question? I'm sorry. Well, why they don't bring Mulvaney to testify, like, subpoena? Make a subpoena to testify. Okay, subpoena so. Him, right? So the reason they didn't was that the Congress, the House of Representatives, the controlled by the Democrats, did subpoena him to appear. They subpoenaed all sorts of documents, uh, which is their right under the U.S. Constitution because they have that power. Otherwise, the president's a dictator. And the president instead said, I'm, he didn't say this, but essentially he said, I'm a dictator, I'm acting as a dictator, you're corrupt, so that's my excuse for not giving the documents to you because the documents will incriminate me, these testimonies will incriminate me, therefore I say, it's a witch hunt, it's fake news, I'm gaslighting you, you know, because up is down and down is up, and that's what it's about, you know. So 
he had no right to do that under the Constitution. That's why so many people are upset. That's what really upsets the Democratic Party. That's why I'm upset. That's why many people are upset is because we're losing our 250 year history of the United States of America because we're tied together by this Constitution. Without this Constitution, we do not exist as a people. Do you get that? Do you get that? Do you know that Rome had a constitution very similar to our constitution? And once Caesar crossed the Rubicon and entered the city with an army, uh, the constitution was dead. You know, there comes a moment when if you kill it, it's dead forever. So that's the moment we may be facing. So, ah, that's why it's so important. You know, this is not just Republicans against Democrats. This is the constitution against a dictator. This is a dictator. This is a would-be tyrant who may become a real tyrant. This is a guy who's more interested in the, maybe the one book he read in his life, which was Mein Kampf, according to his first wife, which he kept under the pillow as inspiration from the Fuhrer himself, you know, so that he could dream sweet dreams about the Fuhrer and how perhaps he could be a Fuhrer one day. You know, that's, he knows more about Hitler than he does about the U.S. Constitution because to him, power is what is important. So. He doesn't care about you out there in TV land. He doesn't care about the American people. He cares about Trump. And he loves dictators. And he loves the idea of power and how he could get more power himself. That's what he is. That's what he is. Uh, there is another, uh, another news here in the, uh, in the Latino community, Mark. Uh, the, we have a... A new uh, member of this, uh, the commissioner here in uh, in, in in Grand Rapids, uh, a new uh, Latina, Jassy. On the city commission. On the city commission. Uh, it's, it's the first time the a Latina is selected to this office. So congratulations, congratulations to Jassy. What's her name? Jassy is her her name. Jassy. Yatsi, Yatsi. Yatsi? Yatsi. Those are not my words. It's a little bit weird, her name, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a. But uh, he was uh, elected. Chairman Nadler campaigned to the Democrats. Last night she swore the, the, the you know, that she's going to be the. Is. New York Times. Member of this. Uh, of this. Of the. Because city the city hall, no? Oh, she's not a member of the city? Oh, she was sworn in. Yeah. She took the oath, which is what they've talked a lot about the oath of office, uh, if you've been listening. Um, as far as I'm concerned, really the Republican Party and most of these Republicans are, are not honestly dealing with their oath of office. If they were, they couldn't support this. I mean, it's pretty obvious. What's going on here is this gaslighting, as they say, is obvious. Up is down, down is up. It's a lie. They're following a liar. And uh, I'm sure there are a few Republicans who are honest about this and are really just deluded. But I think most of them are just uh, conscious of the lie and going with the lie. So this is like being, uh, the good German who marches along with the Nazis because it seems like the thing to do because everyone around them is doing it. Um, and this is that moment for us. And uh, it's good he's being impeached, um, but this will happen again. He'll do something worse next time. Even before the election, he's going to do something worse. He's going he's gonna to grab the wrong body part or something it it's it's going to happen again and again and call, again. And it continues to this day. Uh. Yeah, uh, well, hopefully, hopefully, Mark, uh, Trump is impeached. And, uh, he is removed. impeached. He removed. He's, 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 hopefully he'll be removed. But if it doesn't two minutes, happen, two if, minutes. if it doesn't happen this time, there's still next time. He's going to do it again. And it might be even before the election, we might be seeing Trump do something even more bizarre, because that's his history. He's always going to do something uh, more extreme next time, because he's the Trumpy. Yeah. So we almost we are leaving, Mark. Yeah, we, the show is almost done. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming to the show. 
Thank, thank, uh, thank you, Pablo, for letting me rant. Uh, en, uh, ya nos vamos. Hasta la próxima. Este es Tiempo Latino. Tiempo Latino. I think you should um, wrap things up for us, partially in Spanish, at least. Uh, well, we just talk about impeachment, and uh, hopefully Trump is going to be impeached and removed from office. That's our best wishes. I want to wish you a great impeachment. Acusar al Trump. We keep our fingers crossed that he will be removed. Hopefully he's going to be removed. Y para nuestra audiencia en español, estamos hablando de la destitución de Trump. Mark nos está informando que este, probablemente sea destituido a Trump de la presidencia. Están votando hoy para destituirlo. Y, pero tiene que, eh, una vez que, es, que se aprueba la destitución, pasa al Senado. El Senado tiene que votar para remover a Trump de la, de la presidencia. Uh, ¿Qué que, que dice Pablo? Uh, ¿Republicanos uh, es uh, desilusionarios? Uh, ilusos, ilusos. Ilusos, yes. Republicanos uh, es ilusos. Ilusos. Uh, ilusos. They, like they live in a, like in another reality, right? Uh, it's mal re reality. A crazy reality. What's that in Spanish? A crazy reality. Una realidad loca. Uh, una real de loca. Realidad. Yeah. Adiós, amigos. Crazy, crazy. Destitución de Republicans, crazy. Destituyen a Trump. Crazy Republicans. Crazy, crazy Republicans. What will they do next? <laughs> Those crazy Republicans. <laughs> Those rascals. They're just so kooky. So kooky. Destituir a Trump. Results of the last election to influence the next one. As I said, President Trump will still be president when this is all over. But Congress will have wasted months of time and taxpayers' dollars on impeachment rather than doing what America's people want us to do. It didn't have to be this way. Is this why we came here to serve? To trample on due process rights? To issue more subpoenas than laws? To appease the new Democrat socialist base? That is not leadership. That is raw political politics, and you know it. By refusing to acknowledge the truth or follow the facts, by substituting partisan animosity for real demonstration of innocence or guilt, and by continuing a three-year effort to undermine the president, this impeachment has divided this nation without any concern for the repercussions. Moreover, politicizing this process has discredited the United States House of Representatives and could forever weaken the remedy of impeachment. To again quote Professor Turley, 
It is the Democrats' rush to impeachment on these grounds with unfair procedures that is an abuse of power. History will write that. Madam Speaker, as I said at the beginning, we face a choice. Do you trust the wisdom of the people? Or do you deny them a say in their government? Fortunately, the people will have the opportunity to speak up and render their verdict in 11 months to my fellow Americans. To my fellow Americans, if you prove of the way of this House has conducted their business, if you want to see your tax dollars go forward to endless investigations, support this impeachment. But if you want to restore a working Congress, like the previous Congress that listened to you and worked to bring the best economy in this country has ever seen, and one that once again will work the, with the President to get things done for you and your family, then join with us in rejecting this baseless impeachment. That's what's wonderful about this system of ours. We are a government of, by, and for the people. Always remember we work for you, not the other way around. Now, I will say this stronger and with more conviction than I have ever said it before. In this time of great trial,